Have the Spanish authorities violated human rights in Catalonia in the past few months? This question has been discussed today at the UN headquarters in Geneva. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. The Spanish police violence during the October 1st referendum and the four pro-independence leaders in jail for months have been some of the hot topics of a debate at the United Nations offices in Geneva today. This was only one of the events on Catalonia which are taking place these days. Here at Catalan News Today we'll connect with Geneva and tell you how the day unfolded. In our show today we'll also be able to speak with a professor of public protest law who took part in today's discussion. The 37th session of the Council of Human Rights of the United Nations is being held this week, coinciding with a meeting, some side events and an international film festival on human rights are going on, with some Catalan officials attending, including Carlos Puigdemont. The reason? Human rights in Catalonia and Spain is on the agenda. The Catalan issue has landed at the United Nations headquarters. For the first time, the current political situation in Catalonia was discussed in a side event of the international organization, which hosted the debate Human Rights Regression in Spain. The wife of a jailed Catalan minister took part in the conference, as did an expert in public protest law and a former Spanish Supreme Court judge. The speakers denounced the violation of human rights in Spain as well as the lack of separation of powers. They also call on the international community to react against what they consider to be state repression. The wife of incarcerated Catalan official Joaquim Forn called their presence in Geneva a cry for help. I per tant estar aquí avui és un per nosaltres molt important, és una manera de fer com un crit d'auxili i que algú miri exactament el que està passant. La presó preventiva, la veritat és que no la justifica gairebé ningú. Among the attendees were Carles Puigdemont and the former CUP MEP Ana Gabriela, who moved to Geneva last month seeking refuge from the Spanish judiciary. After the event, Gabriel criticized the EU stance towards the Catalan crisis. Perquè la Unió Europea si tanca els ulls davant una vulneració de drets civils, polítics i humans en un estat de la Unió Europea està obrint les portes a vulneracions massives arreu del món. It is the second day that the political situation in Catalonia is being discussed in Geneva. Switzerland was seen as a possible mediator between Catalonia and Spain when tensions reached their peak some months ago. Yesterday, Puigdemont took part in another debate on self-determination at a film festival in the Swiss city and did not rule out that as a possibility. Sería un privilegio poder contar con la mediación de gente tan comprometida con la mediación, con la paz y con los derechos humanos. We've seen two very intense days here in Switzerland for Catalan politicians, but their agenda is not over yet. Tomorrow, a Catalan MEP and one of the ministers that is currently living in Brussels on exile will take part in a new debate here in the UN headquarters in Geneva. On Wednesday, Catalan President Carlos Puigdemont will give a conference at the Geneva University. And on Thursday, he will start a new trip abroad. It will be his third trip since he is living in Brussels on exile and this time the destination is going to be Finland. As you've just heard, Finland will be Puigdemont's third destination since he moved to Belgium following the declaration of independence and his dismissal as Catalan president. This way he will continue spreading his message after in January he visited Denmark for two days and this week he's in Switzerland. Puigdemont will visit the Finnish parliament and will hold a lecture at the University of Helsinki. Both in Copenhagen and in Geneva, the Spanish prosecutor asked the Spanish authorities to demand an extradition for Puigdemont, but so far it has received no positive response. Spain's Supreme Court withdrew a European arrest warrant on him and other investigated leaders in Belgium last December. The Spanish government has shown concern over Puigdemont's trips. No, yo no voy a ocultar que nos genera cierta incomodidad, pero más que nada por esa especie de circo ambulante que está desarrollando. Quiero decir, nos preocupa eh, en la medida de, quiero decir, de una manera eh, no excesiva. Now we can speak with Michael Hamilton, a senior lecturer of public protest law at the University of East Anglia in England, and one of the speakers today at the event in the UN offices in Geneva. Thank you very much for being with us, Mr. Hamilton. Hello. Hello. First of all, do you think the UN is a good place to discuss the situation in Catalonia? 
I think it's it's really important that the debate about the political process in Catalonia is heard at the UN. Um, I, I think it's important that all international bodies are used as a forum to, to discuss the possibilities of, of making political progress and indeed to focus on the violations of, of human rights that have occurred in past months and indeed past years. And the UN especially has a number of offices which um, focus on the protection of human rights with Spain as a member of the Human Rights Council until 2020. I think it's a really vital forum for uh, these issues to be raised. From your perspective, have there been violations of human rights in Catalonia? Well, my, my work focuses on the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and regrettably, yes, there have been very evident violations of the right to freedom of peaceful assembly in Catalonia. And this has come around through a number of, of, of different things. We've seen changes to the law. Um, we've seen the, the Public Security Act. We've seen amendments to the Criminal Code. And we've, of course, also seen uh, policing that uh, fall short of international standards, particularly with regard to the use of force and the excessive and disproportionate use of force against peaceful protesters. Uh, and I think the right to, to, to freedom of peaceful assembly is one that must be upheld. It's foundational to any functioning democratic state. Uh, and it, it includes the right to challenge uh, and to talk about the way in which a state is organized and the constitutional status off, off, a, off a state. So I think the right to freedom of assembly is one that we, we need to see progress on in, in, in relation to Spain uh, and it, its upholding in Catalonia. Do you think the case of the Catalan jailed leaders will find more understanding in the United Nations than in the European Union? Well, I think their presence here is a very powerful message uh, and one that is, is very visible in the sense that it brings to the forefront uh, the, the real impact that the political repression is having. Uh, as to whether they will receive more comfort here than in the EU, it's very difficult to say. I would argue that both uh, the attention needs to be focused at the EU level as well as at the international level uh, and uh, doing whatever can be done to galvanize international attention and mobilization around this issue with a view to breaking the political deadlock is, is, is really vital. Thank you very much Mr Hamilton. Thank you. And as the political action unfolds these days in Switzerland, it also does so in Catalonia. The country still has no new president, but some moves to elect one could take place in the coming days. But waiting for them to happen, all eyes are now on Madrid, especially on the Spanish Supreme Court. Catalan politics is once more waiting on a judicial decision so as to move forward. It's been three months since the election and almost five since Madrid suspended Catalonia's self-rule and yet the country still has no president. The candidate for the post, Jordi Sanchez, will leave prison for a few hours tomorrow to attend an appeal hearing in Spain's Supreme Court. While the judge could decide to release him, the chances are slim. Although another appeal is still pending, the court's decision could prompt the pro-independence parties to activate a backup plan, something the Esquerra party hinted at today. Bé, com deia, nosaltres parlem de de hores o dies, entenem que demà és un dia clau i que poden passar doncs coses importants. The pressure is mounting on the parties in favor of a Catalan state as the unionist parties urge them to find someone for the post who isn't involved in the independence court case. The Ciutadans party also thinks that the parliament speaker Roger Turren is not helping to end the current deadlock. A spokesman for the party today referred to him and to Puigdemont's current place of residence. Y eso está en manos del señor Turren. El señor Turren lo que tiene que hacer es dejar de hacer caso de prófugos de la justicia que hablan desde Waterloo y empezar a hacer política aquí en Cataluña para los catalanes. Catalunya en Comú, aligned with neither the independence or unionist causes, also call for an end to the current impasse as soon as possible. Y creiem que davant d'aquesta crisi de governabilitat, esperem que alguns no estiguin pensant en marxar de vacances de Setmana Santa. Even if the main pro-independence parties nominate a new candidate for president after tomorrow, the stalemate might still not be over. They need the support of the minor far-left Coup party for a majority. Coup has so far rejected its pro-independence allies' plans for this term. Yet Puigdemont's candidacy introduced a new element to help bring them on board, a mid-term vote of confidence. The deposed president and the former Coup MP Anna Gabriel met today in Geneva. 
Might it have helped in finding a way out? In other news, the refugee rescue ship of the Proactiva Open Arms NGO has been blocked in Italy. A prosecutor in Catania, Sicily, is accusing the Catalan organization of fostering illegal immigration and criminal association. They allegedly ignored orders from Libyan coast guards in a rescue operation on Thursday. The NGO complains that they are being harassed for helping people and say they even received death threats from coast guards. Proactiva Open Arms is a Catalan NGO which has saved tens of thousands of refugees from drowning in the Mediterranean. But now they're the ones who are in trouble. It all started last Thursday when their rescue ship received the location of a refugee boat from the Italian Coast Guards. They rescued more than 200 people, some of whom were in need of severe medical help. Although they were in international waters, Libyan Coast Guards came with the aim of taking refugees back to Africa. Italian authorities ordered the NGO to follow their orders and tensions rose quickly. Eh, intentamos apaciguar los ánimos, no lo conseguimos, los libios nos amenazan de muerte, la situación se vuelve muy tensa, cae gente al agua. The Libyan coast guards left after three hours, but the rescue ship remained at sea for more than a day, as no port authorized it to dock. Eventually, they were allowed to berth in South Sicily. But there were still more problems to come. Italy is good! Italy is good! Italian authorities blocked the ship and accused the NGO of criminal association and fostering illegal immigration, charges carrying prison sentences of up to seven years. The director and founder warns that theirs is not an isolated case. Nos sentimos igual que todos los trabajadores humanitarios que son acosados, porque hoy en día parece ser que la solidaridad se ha convertido en un delito, ¿no? Out of nine NGOs who used to rescue people in the Mediterranean, persecution from Libyan and Italian authorities have left only three. Proactiva Open Arms have called on authorities at all levels to help solve the situation as quickly as possible. Because the longer the ship remains docked, the fewer people it will be able to save. Several officials commented on the issue, including Barcelona's mayor, Ada Colau, who supported the NGO, and also Spanish and European authorities. Et nous sommes confiants maintenant que les, Italiens, enfin les autorités italiennes euh, vont euh, continuer à gérer la situation euh, telle est euh, leur compétence. El apoyo que esté en nuestras manos como ciudad, desde luego, lo vamos a dar y no nos vamos a desentender y no vamos a mirar hacia otro lado porque nos parece que esto es lo más grave que está pasando ahora mismo en toda Europa. Even if you've just arrived in Barcelona, you may have noticed bright, colorful art and sculptures about the place, from a mural at Terminal 2 of the airport to sculptures throughout the city and on the beach. This is the work of Joan Miró, renowned Catalan artist, but now Catalonia isn't the only place where you can see his work. Miró's art and sculptures can be found just about everywhere in Barcelona. And now you can see an extensive collection of the Catalan artist's work in the northern Cantabrian capital, Santander. Under the name Joan Miró, Sculptures, 1928-1982, the exhibit opens tomorrow and runs until early September. The collection showcases everything from Miró's earliest three-dimensional work to creations from just before his death. Many of the sculptures come from as far as Paris or New York, and some have never before been shown in Spain, restored just for the occasion. And each one has a story to tell. Eh, porque Miró buscaba en cada fundición un lenguaje distinto para el acabo de su pieza. Las texturas querían que fueran siempre diferentes y en cada fundición le da un mundo propio. The materials used ran the gamut of his artistic career, from metal, bronze, wood, paint, fiberglass and more. Along with the sculptures, Visitors will also be able to see sketches, photos and even videos, all detailing the artist's creative process. Joan Miró y Farrà was a Catalan painter, sculptor and ceramicist, born in Barcelona at the end of the 19th century. His work is now placed in the Surrealist movement, recreating childlike aspects and displaying Catalan pride, sometimes displaying disdain for conventional art forms. And, according to the curator of the exhibit in Santander, this groundbreaking worldview remains cutting edge, even today. Y esta escultura, esta exposición de esculturas demuestra que Miró es actual y está vivo y es, es realmente podría ser un artista nuestro joven actual. 
Visitors can see the exhibit and learn more at the Centro Botín. And with this, we've come to the end of our show. But before leaving, we want to show you a unique concert that took place yesterday. This was the performance with the biggest orchestra ever to play together in Catalonia, with 1,700 musicians of all ages from all over the country, put on by the Catalan Association of Music Schools to celebrate its 25th anniversary. But that's just a taste of what's to come. In June, they will perform a piece with 6,500 musicians. Enjoy, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you.